Welcome to DW News. I'm here in Frankfurt with Spain's Vice President and Economy Minister Nadia Calviño. Welcome to DW and thanks for uh, giving us your time. So first and foremost, what brings you here to Germany? Well, I'm here to celebrate the anniversary of the European Central Bank. And since I was in Frankfurt, we already had a number of meetings with uh, investors very interested in the Spanish market and in particular sovereign debt. So it's been a very productive day so far. That's great. Now, let's get straight down into it and let's talk about one of the big topics here that's being discussed a lot in Germany and across the, the European Union, of course, which is energy and specifically green energy. Now, Spain is well positioned to produce green hydrogen, plenty of sun, plenty of wind, so those great natural resources, huge potential. But critics are saying that there are issues, um, the high cost of producing it and also the infrastructure is just not sufficient to actually um, really exploit it to its full potential. Potential. What I want to know is how is Spain planning on maximizing that potential that it has? Well, energy is obviously a key issue for the competitiveness of, of European industry and the European economy and also for the welfare of European citizens. That's why last year we introduced the Iberian solution, which has allowed us to bring energy prices down very significantly and bring inflation down uh, so that Spain is one of the countries with the lowest inflation rates right now. And that's thanks to the regulation, but also to the high penetration of renewables in Spain. And indeed, we're betting very hard on renewables. We're investing a large share, 40% of uh, the European funds, the Next Generation EU programme, is directed towards the green transition and in particular developing the roadmap for green hydrogen and classic renewables, sun and wind. Um, and we already see the, the impact on the ground. Around 50% of energy generated in Spain comes from renewables. We want to increase that share and we would be happy to become Europe's energy hub. Uh, we need to invest in interconnection though. Tell us something, now that we're talking about the Spanish economy, you've touched on a couple of issues there that I wanted to talk about. Spain has made reforms and there has been let's call it modest growth as well in Spain in the economy. You used to talk there about inflation being kept down, relatively speaking, compared to other big economies in Europe. Um, the recovery fund as well. Spain received uh, over 70 billion euros in grants um, and loans, but it has been slow to spend it. Why is that? Well, on the contrary, I think the, the Spanish economy had the largest drop in GDP due to the pandemic. We had a very severe lockdown and the impact of hospitality and, and tourism hit us hard. But Spain is having a very strong bounce back and, and growth continues. Actually, we had 5.5 GDP growth in 2021 and 22. The first quarter of 2023 was 3.8%. All analysts are reviewing their forecast uh, upwards so that Spain will continue to be, for the third year in a row, one of the engines of growth in Europe, growing, outperforming uh, the largest European economies and OECD average. And this is mostly thanks to the recovery plan, indeed. The massive investments that we're undertaking with the next generation EU funds, thanks to Europe's solidarity, and also the structural reforms. We have front-loaded our program so that it is already having a great impact on the ground. We see the impact, for example, of the labour market reform, vocational training, science, and we're modernising our, our uh, country, showing, I think, that this time around, Europe took the right decisions, and we're having a very different exit from the pandemic's crisis to the one we had with the great financial crisis in, in 2008. Let's talk about, though, a couple of the issues which still remain. The deficit is quite high, um, also, unemployment is still quite high in Spain. Um, why are these problems still persisting? One of the uh, factors dragging growth and prosperity in Spain has been unemployment for years. But thanks to this very strong growth, we are able to reach all-time records in terms of employment levels. Latest numbers for social security affiliations throw, show uh, 20,800,000 persons affiliated. This is an all-time record. We are at historical minima in youth unemployment and general unemployment. The quality of the jobs and the productivity is also improving. Strong growth and job creation is allowing us uh, to reduce our debt and deficit to GDP ratios as fast as possible. We have outperformed our targets in the two previous years. The European Commission has confirmed that our, uh, that our fiscal plan is meeting the targets uh, this year and, and in the coming couple of years. 
and we have been able to advance by one year to 2024 the reduction of the deficit to 3% of GDP target. So we are very committed to fiscal responsibility in a manner which is consistent with pursuing growth and job creation. Let's talk a little bit about now the EU because Spain is taking over, of course, the presidency of the EU in July. And also, I want to bring in here as well Mercosur, okay? Because now, Spain has expressed, let's say, an interest in dealing with uh, the fact that uh, Mercosur has been stalled now, essentially, for years. Um, but it is going to seek to get that trade agreement moving. Um, how much influence does Madrid have at, let's say, a European level to get something moving with, the, with respect to Mercosur? Well, we reached a, a preliminary agreement back in 2019 and indeed there has not been much progress since. But I think we do have a window of opportunity now, not only because of Spain chairing the European Council of Ministers, which I do think shows uh, and increases the interest uh, with regards to the transatlantic relations, but also because right now uh, there's a new government in Brazil leading Mercosur right now. And from a geopolitical level, I think there is an increased awareness that we need to have a deep cooperation with our Latin American uh, partners on the other side of the Atlantic. So we will do uh, all we can to make progress with Mercosur, also the agreements with Mexico and Chile. And I do think the next semester brings us a window of opportunity that I hope we seize in Europe, because we have every interest from an economic, but also from a geopolitical point of view to deepen our cooperation with Latin America. Speaking about geopolitics, um, and, and also actually another issue which I want to touch on, which is the debt crisis. Now, um, in your role as the chair of the International Monetary and Financial Committee, you recently said that China needs to play a greater role um, in, quote, protecting the most vulnerable countries. Now, what I want to know is, what does Beijing need to do in order to meet those expectations that you've spoken of? But China is, is obviously a key creditor to many vulnerable countries throughout the world. So we need them to play a constructive role, uh, sitting around the table in a constructive mode, so that we can provide debt relief to these highly indebted and most vulnerable countries. And I must say, in the recent meetings we had back in April in Washington, I saw a relatively constructive approach, which is already allowing us to make progress in some of the debt agreements with, with vulnerable countries. Um, in the current context, uh, China is a very important economic player, and we cannot just ignore them. We have to bring them to the table and engage, also with a view to facilitating uh, an end to the war in Ukraine as soon as possible. A, a permanent, a fair peace would be the best news we can get in terms of economic and financial performance throughout the world. I want to just bring in another topic, just sort of moving a little bit in a different direction, which is AI. Artificial intelligence, okay? So, with regards to Spain, um, how is Spain regulating it? And also, at a European level, do you think enough is being done to regulate AI? Because it's this big topic that everyone is talking about at the moment. Well, the AI Act will certainly be one of the top priorities of the Spanish presidency, together with the e-identity, the Data Act, and other pieces of legislation that will set the basis for the framework for the technological development in Europe going forward. And I think the time is now because these technological developments are accelerating exponentially. Uh, we are the last presidency before the elections, and we have no time to lose to have a European framework that fully protects our rights and values and ensures that the, the development takes place in a safe uh, environment, providing confidence to citizens. And Spain is well placed to lead this debate because we have been working for the last three years in, an, in a strong roadmap, a very ambitious roadmap, to support the technological development, but on the basis of a charter of digital rights, so that we can ensure that these new developments are not endangering our democratic uh, values and the functioning of our uh, systems, our political systems, that we can ensure protection of uh, data rights and, and privacy, all the democratic rights and values that we cherish so in, in the EU. Now, you're here in Frankfurt, uh, you're, you're going to be meeting uh, Chancellor Schultz. Now, this is sort of a, I want to sort of wrap this, this conversation that we're having today up. Um, what do you think Chancellor Schultz in Germany will say can learn from Spain? 
Well, I have, a, I have a, the utmost respect for Chancellor Scholz. We're, we're, I think, good friends since he was finance minister, worked very closely together to provide this European progressive response to the crisis generated by the pandemic that is allowing us to have such a different way out compared to the one we lived after the great financial crisis. I think he is a, one of the key actors of, of European solidarity and a key player going forward. And well, I think that Spain uh, can certainly play a leading role with regards to a couple of issues. Digitalization, we have invested and we are investing heavily in digitalization. We think there's a new digital economy and we have to jump on this bandwagon and, and, and Europe has to be leading in these new technologies. And then there's a second area which has to do with energy regulation. Thanks to the uh, energy reform we, we undertook last year, which is, has a temporary nature but is being very effective, uh, Europe, Spanish industry is having a competitive edge because of lower energy prices. We've been putting on the table proposals to reform the European regulatory framework in the energy market and I hope that Germany joins in and is also a driver for, cha for change so that we can ensure Europe's uh, strategic autonomy and also the competitiveness of European industry going forward. Vice President of Spain and the Economy Minister, Nadia Calviño, thank you for joining us on DW. Thanks to you, it's been a pleasure.